What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I got this clip from a podcast called The Viral Way Podcast. I want you brothers to go and check them out here on YouTube. They're doing some amazing work. And recently, they had the opportunity to cover the situation about Ebony K. Williams. And what Ebony K. Williams is doing uh, is very controversial because she did become a single mother by choice in taking the father out of the home intentionally, right? Now, what do you really mean when you say intentionally? I want to play this clip in which you're going to hear exactly how she do it, did it and what is going to happen to the kid if they want to know who the father is after 18 years. I don't know. I've heard his voice. Mm -hmm. so I have an MP3 file of mm -hmm. him telling his own life story. Mm -hmm. Why you felt you wanted to donate. And this was important. His willingness to be contacted when my child turns 18. Mm -hmm. So when my daughter's 18 years old, if she would like to find out her paternal identity, as I wanted to do when I was 38, mm -hmm. she doesn't even have to wait that long and go through all that rigmarole that I had to do. Hire a geneticist, hire a uh, detective. Here is his last known address, and he is anticipating your contact yeah childhood photos adult photos uh keepsake essays from him from the nursing staff first impression what he does for a living his educational background his sats i mean it's just a litany so for me it felt like a much safer choice yeah it felt like a more legally astute mm -hmm. choice it gives me much less um exposure risk, yeah. risk and exposure mm -hmm. so you've heard that now let us listen to the viral way podcast responding to Ebony K. Williams. My take on it. She's a fucking goofy. Facts. She's a fucking goofy. She's the op. She's the opposition. I said it when she came out with the whole bus driver thing. I already saw right through it. And here she goes proving me correct. This is the same bitch that says she's too good to date a bus driver, but you're not too good to be a single mom. <laughs> How <laughs> <laughs> like just like, think yeah, about the logic. Yeah, facts. You're too good to have a man in the house because of his occupation. Even though you a boss, you got all this money, so that really shouldn't even be an issue. If money not an issue, right? So he could be the best dad in the world, but you make a little more money. But you're too good for that. You rather your kid suffer and grow up without a father, not even have a chance at one. You're choosing to remove the father from him for your own selfish, selfish. reasons. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you. A uh, because you didn't say all women you didn't say hey women y'all should start you said black, black women. women this is why i said i think she's paid opposition because why are you only directing it towards the black community if this is how you feel about women no but you said black women you a uh. not only that let's look up some statistics of kids from single mother homes how they turn out effects of father of fatherlessness 63% of all youth suicides come from single mother homes. 70% of all teen pregnancies, single mm -hmm. mother homes. 71% of all adolescent chemical substance abusers, single mother homes. 80% of all prison inmates, single mother homes. 90% of all homeless and runaway kids come from single mother homes. Children brought up in single mother homes five times more likely to commit suicide, nine times more likely to drop out of high school, 10 times more likely to abuse chemical substances, 14 more times more likely to commit, excuse me, 20 times more likely to end up in prison, 32 times more likely to run away from home. Over 30% of families led by single mothers are living in poverty compared to 16% of families led by single dads. 85% of homeless families are single mother families. 50% are below the poverty line and, and their children are six times more likely to end up in poverty. So as you can see, every negative aspect that you possibly can garnish in life is a result of a single mother home. Then when you go look at the statistics of when the father's in the home, this shit's almost non-existent. Even to the point where the mother's out of the picture and it's only the father. The statistics come out about the same as that kid getting raised with two parents, with just the father. So that lets you know the, the major key is the dad. 
eliminating the dad is is complete destruction. And the fact that you would promote that to the black community is insane to me. I don't understand it. She's a f op, and I'm gonna leave it at that. Can I say something? Go ahead. So realistically, with everything that the statistics that you read are true, but let's just call a thing a thing. Um, what she's saying is not nothing different from what's being pushed the agenda. It's an agenda. Oh, yeah, that's a fact. Because oh, yeah. being a single mother, I'm not going to say being a single mother, but we all know in the 70s, 80s, people have to get on welfare. You cannot have a man in the home. Yeah. So realistically, what she's saying is is true, but that's what's been pushed upon us. But since we know the truth, though, we should have. Okay. Yeah, we so, need to. But we know, right? Like you said, we know that. We, we, we are seeing that now, but we talking about a system that's been designed to make I, I'm going to just household. say black women. I'm going to say black women, single mothers. This is the, it's all a part of an agenda. So I get what you are saying, but you got to, it, it goes way back into something else. It's a, it's a whole infrastructure. It's, just, it's a systemic way of providing of, the family. Way. And, but and now yeah, that we you know can do though, something different, but like, I know most people, I'm going to just tell you the truth. And, I, and I'm going to just say it real quick. You, you know, somebody that's on section eight, right? They got mm -hmm. five kids. They rent $300. Realistically, <laughs> they can't afford to pay three thousand dollars rent. So, are you gonna lie and say yo you don't got a man? Whatever the case may be, it's the way the system is designed. You get what I'm trying to say? I, I get what you're saying, but we in the age of information, and we already know this. So now that we have this information, we got to get out of that victim exactly. mindset and mm -hmm. and break that cycle. We know I what they're doing. Feel like we, it's a victim mindset. No, it's, it's, it's a victim. It's, it's, it's a victim mind. No, well, it's a they, victim mindset because your mindset. The, the thoughts you think create your reality. So a lot of people that's stuck in poverty, they think with, with a poverty mindset. Yeah. They don't have the mindset to get out, like you said. Yep. Instead of trying to find ways to get out, it's let me lie and say he ain't in the house so I can keep this section eight because I don't never want to lose it. You don't want to. You can't surpass that ceiling because if you surpass it, they go take it from you. Now it's exactly. on your own. Exactly. When the goal should yeah. be to get out. Yeah. It's like let them they, take it. Because really, it's it's really better. a short term, temporary solution. But some people make it to a lifetime, generational curse. Exactly. And you get my do, kids on section yeah, eight. Yeah, Look, baby, that, this how you get yeah. on, and it just go generation instead to generation. Of, instead of teaching that, we should be like, nah, let's. We go use the section eight and then let's try to get out of it so we can right. own a house. So we can, right. we can, we can, we yeah. should flip the narrative. Yes. And you know what I'm saying? Instead of passing down the negative of let's not make this money, let's start teaching the financial literacy and let's try to elevate. Now, I read some of the comments on there and I saw some of the sisters from the community saying, I stopped listening when he was referring to her as the B word. Uh, why did he have to say it like that? And if you notice, we had to do um, a lot of the bleeping of the uh, of the words out because the brother was going in. But I believe the point is valid. And the one thing that I've noticed, especially since I've been living uh, out of the country the last decade, is the man is everything in these societies. The man is everything. And you know, when I see how the children are behaved, especially when I was living in Poland, even living in Africa, you know, you just don't see the disobedience and the wildness and the disrespects of the kids that you see in the States. You don't see it. Kids are well-mannered. Kids are disciplined. And I'll tell you why, because the fathers are there, okay? And a lot of those kids go on to do, you know, pretty decent things in society. You know, obviously in Poland, it's a little bit better because, you know, it's a rich country. But when you see the children in the States and you see them, how they act and, you know what's going on with them and can't nobody tell them anything it's 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 disheartening and you and you look at them and you say i mean this kid's not gonna make it you know this kid's gonna have a hard time and then when the women make these decisions because they want to have a kid they're not even taken into consideration at all what the outcome of the kid is going to be because it's really about i want a child not about what situation am i bringing the child in Am I bringing the child into a good situation? And I'd rather choose nobody over a bus driver, which has everything to do with her. Ebony K. Williams is a very attractive lady. She's not ugly. She's had every opportunity to meet all sorts of men. She's been, you know, un uh, she was educated at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, which is an awesome school. She went to law school. She's been in entertainment. Why was it that she couldn't find anybody else? For the you know the same thing so now because of your bad attitude and poor choices in life your child has to suffer and i'm telling you a lot of people's kids are gonna suffer 
based on the bad attitudes and decisions of their parents forever. That's the whole point. And can't nobody tell you nothing right now. And when you get a kid and now both of y'all lives might be affected, can't nobody tell you then. And it's okay. Again, you can do whatever you want to do. That's fine. Here's what I would suggest though. Don't come around blaming anybody else for your shortcomings because I get it. Some people want to do them and that's fine. But don't come around when your child don't come around to be who he is. Well, you know, his daddy wasn't there. Well, you got, you know, what, what, what happened to you? Superstar. See, everybody needs help. You know, and, and the black community forgets that you, you, one of the reasons why we don't have what we have is because we're doing everything by ourselves. You can't do everything by yourself. It's impossible. All these other groups that flourish, they have so much help. They have businesses, they have communities, they have parents, they have grandparents. Okay. They have business partners, everything you need to, to do something in life. They got it. Here come people in the black community talking about, we don't need this and we don't need that. And I got it all by myself. Do you really? Are you sure? Are you positive that you got it all figured out? I beg to differ. I, I believe that you don't have it figured out. And then when it's too late and you find out that, oh, I'm struggling. Well, it don't matter. The kid is there now. The kid is there now and the kid's suffering now. So why is that the case? What is it going to take for people in the community to understand like, yo, why everything got to be so difficult? Why do you need to impact the life of the kid? Because you feel like it, because it's not fair. When these kids grow up and their brother read those statistics, those stats are true. When the kids grow up in that sort of environment and they turn out to be something else. And then when that kid turns out to be a 50, 50 black man, or he can't do nothing, Black women will be talking about that young man and they'll be saying, well, you see, these black men ain't nothing. They lazy. They don't want to work. Well, who raised them? Again, you made a decision not to be with a decent man or you made a, a big mistake. And in the case of Ebony K. Williams, she didn't even want the guy there. So when this young man is not prepared to be a man for another woman, what are you going to say? Who do you blame? Don't blame the men. Blame these women if that's their point of view. And see, it's so easy to absolve responsibility when they make these choices. Even Ebony K. Williams, if the child turns out female or male, turns the child turns out to make bad decisions in life, well, somehow black men will still be blamed. Well, you see, the, oh, the reason why she had to do that is because you know what? Wouldn't no black men step up? Oh, no, 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 no. We're not, we, we, we not even going to deal with that, boo. No, we don't. No, no, no. Hold that L. Hold it. Stop blaming these black men, okay? Y'all wanna do whatever y'all wanna do, that's fine. But accept, accept what happened afterwards. Accept that you wanna do what you wanna do when you got ready. So don't blame these brothers. You wanna go ahead on and weave and sound it up, fine. But when, when like I tell, tell girls who used to deal with drug dealers, it's all good now till them police come kicking in your door and don't cry when they come kick your door in and take you and him. Stand by him like you were standing by him when he was selling dope, giving you money. So guys, what do you think it's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson? Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Appreciate you for all you just heard the bell. We're out.